Hi everyone. Today we're going to have a little look at driving in some poor weather conditions. Now um, we are in the uh, the tail end of storm Eunice. Um, it actually came in yesterday to the UK. Today's the Saturday. So the first little piece of advice I'd like to give is if you've got really really bad weather like it was yesterday, um, don't go out. Don't go out unless you absolutely have to. But it's still pretty poor today. Um, it's pouring down. It's still uh, really windy. We're going to have a little look at some techniques that I try and implement into my driving to make things safer. So let's get going. First thing I'd like to point out is um, I always do this even though I'm in a nice warm preheated uh, Tesla I always take a coat with me um, if your car was to break down or you were to have an accident or anything could happen take a coat with you um, I'm forever doing this um, and some of my lads think I'm absolutely mad when I say take a coat you look at me strange but that situation where you do have problems you'll be really glad of it it takes nothing um, I've got my normal puffer it just really just screws up into a ball on the back seat so it's not a big thing so take a coat with you so the weather over the past few days we've had um, some really strong winds we've had um, some heavy rain I haven't been out this morning couldn't even tell you what it's like so we're just gonna um, have a little experience of what's going on now the first thing I'd like to point out here across the road We've got sort of like um, some smooth tarmac and some water running across the road. We need to look out for that. Different types of tarmac give us different types of grip in poor weather. You've got the type of tarmac like we're on now. I know it's really patchy here, but the type of tarmac we've got on or we're on now has got like uh, the loose chippings embedded into the top of it. And that seems to absorb the water a little better than the smooth stuff. So keep an eye out for the smooth tarmac because the water tends to sit all the way on top. Now in poor weather, um, we've got the uh, we've got the wetness obviously we've got to look out for the big dangers that's the big thing all right there are added things that we can be doing um, because of the wet weather regarding acceleration and braking but we're really looking for the big dangers um, try and spot things nice and early um, other vehicles could be swerving around puddles they could be um, moving round uh, maybe fallen branches in the road um, or even braking where it probably seems unnecessary. So we're going to look at a few of these things. I'm going to try and get a mixture of different types of roads. Um, we're going to do a little bit of town stuff for the start and then I'm going to venture out into, I was going to say the country, but it's not really country where I am, um, some rural roads um, effectively. And then I'm going to try and do some faster roads a little bit later and we're going to have a look at a few different things. Um, vision is always important. Um, make sure that your wipers are in good nick. Um, yeah, there's no smearing, there's no juddering on the wipers. Um, tip that I always give to people regarding wipers, wipers often get dirty. People don't realise that. Um, give them a clean. Um, I often get a, a, a cleaning wipe and wipe up and down the whole length of them and you'll be surprised at the amount of black stuff that actually comes off um, the the wipers when you do give them a clean so that could be something but replace them they're not actually super expensive and it's an invaluable way of keeping you safe all right so i can't see around this van sometimes you'll find people diving the other way this road is an absolute classic for fallen branches overhanging trees so we're just watching what's what assess the puddles as well um, obviously we don't want to try and splash people but we've got to be mindful of how that affects our car it might pull us to one side or the other so if at all possible try and avoid under this bridge is always a classic for standing water especially this time of year there's a lot of rubbish on the roads uh, clogs up the grids and again we've got standing water here so rather than go through it there's no one around all I'm gonna do is just slow and maybe go around after the green one yeah don't need to take all of the road didn't want to inconvenience the golf but 
Um, try and plan your route round things um, with the best flow possible, but safety is always the key. Again, we've got some standing water here. I'm gonna do a right turn. Um, going through the edge of the puddle um, is less risky. You don't wanna go through the, uh, the deepest part, if at all possible. I've already mentioned that it could very well give you a little bit of a, a shove from side to side or to one direction or the other going through some deeper water, but you just don't know what's in it. So um, same thing here, plan nice and far. What's that? A little bit of debris on the road. Um, I'll go back to that in a second, but yeah, another puddle, try and negotiate, negotiate round it as best you can. So the debris on the road, that's obviously the remnants of yesterday. Um, there could be branches um, across the road. We're gonna do our best to try and see and plan them early and avoid them in the best way we can. Anything that you've got any doubt of going over, don't. Try and get your wheels obviously either side or literally go around it. So we've got a lot of standing water here. None of it looks that deep. It's not a big deal, especially at this speed that I'm going, uh, going at through that. That's not a big problem. What are people like? What are pedestrians like um, in poor weather? Um, well, they, they tend to act in um, probably a little bit irrational manner. They tend to run across roads. They can tend to not look properly. So they're also other things that we, we should be trying to watch out for. So is there anything here that I would think uh, particularly bad weather? Yeah, I've just seen a puddle that car from the opposite direction so rather than um, get my wheels either side of that speed bump it just helped a little bit slowed down a little bit and allowed them to go through the puddle don't be selfish try and think of best flow for everyone um, this bridge you're familiar with this one okay that's fine thank you much all good I'm gonna turn right up at the end so the horn why is that um, a benefit in poor weather? Well, um, it allows people again more time so they can uh, act in a smoother manner. We've got a crossing traffic situation. No inconvenience to people behind. I can't accelerate too quick because of the poor weather conditions. So give yourself a bigger space. It's that simple. Never put progress over safety. I often hear people in the comment section saying even simple things about moving up in a queue and um, and I would have gone through there when it actually saves them very little time the likelihood is that little wait for another three or four seconds at that junction is going to cost me nothing in the long run because there's always going to be a section a little bit further up that I'm going to be stopped at a satellite so honestly it doesn't save you much time so make certain that everything that you do, junction-wise, is nice and smooth. Be careful of too much acceleration, even driving um, this Tesla. Although we've got the traction control systems, we've got to make sure that we're not giving it the beans out of junctions and potentially unbalancing the car, so nice and smooth. Okay, so we're gonna head um, out towards a little bit of uh, country stuff. We'll have a little look to see whether there's anything that we can pick up on. Always nice and smooth. Use no braking there whatsoever. Although the Tesla does do this automatically when you back off the uh, off the accelerator, but try and slow down in a smooth manner and keep things flowing. That's the key in poor weather. Wind. This is the next thing I want to just talk about. We're coming out of built-up areas into a more open stretch. We've got fields side to side so look at the trees it's actually not too bad today it's not too windy but these are the areas the open areas if you like that are potentially going to get you blown off course a little bit so even here going across the motorway nice open section um, it may very well be that that wind is strongest there now what i'm going to do i'm just going to head left here signaling early and slowing early to manage these people behind. I'm slowing them down for their safety. Cornering has to be a lot, lot slower. Um, although we've got decent grip in these modern tires, um, don't push them anywhere near their extremes. We don't want to get there. 
uneven road surface we've got here on the left if you're doing any steering accelerating or braking over that uneven road surface try not to try and do it before try and see it and sort it earlier um, again this road's an absolute classic um, for maybe branches um, maybe debris in the road that probably is less likely to be cleared as opposed to maybe the other roads um, look for little clues I'm following no one read the signs we've got uh, bends coming up we've got warning of horses I know this road there is a equestrian center and on the right hand side um, and because of this and because people coming the other way might encounter some problems some um, standing water at the side of the road as we can see both sides here you need to take it down a level because people arrive into things and unfortunately you've got to cope with other poor drivers as I'm constantly going on about you've got to think about these people coming the other way too quick suddenly see a puddle and then they're just going to avoid steering to avoid you've heard me say many times so all I'm doing I'm trundling does it make any difference no impatience is often the biggest problem which causes people to fly into things too fast. Is it a day where we're gonna have any fun? No, no chance. Um, okay, so cornering, you've probably heard me say this on a few other videos as well. We need to do all our slowing on the approach. Maybe you can stretch my legs here a little, up to the uh, 40 limit. And I'm straddling the center line, using all the road. Not a problem, no worries doing that on this stretch, but I can't do it for much longer because of the right hand bend slowing everything down before the corner touching my gas lightly to go round and then accelerating out if it's decent it's all about balance with your car um, if you're braking into a corner all that happens is all the weight goes over the front side opposite to the way that you're steering so if I brake going into this right hand corner all the weight goes over the front left hand side I don't want to do that I want to make sure that the car is lovely and balanced and steady throughout the course of the corner and it's less likely to get out of shape get out the other side and then accelerate a little bit more so we've got a similar problem here as we had with the other bridge um, it's quite narrow a few beeps of the horn Make sure, um, even put your window down a little bit, even if you just get wet for a little moment, just to hear whether there's someone coming the other way. Turn your radio down, turn the music down, no worries. Um, so again here, slippy road surface at the end. You can see the distinct difference between the one that absorbs the water and the one that seems to have the water laying on top. slower at the junctions gives you more time to observe and makes less rash decisions and that's the key obviously in poor weather so the distinction in the road surfaces is quite clear although the worn patches on this section that's got the gritty gravelier top you can still see standing water on occasions so just be mindful of that and again doing all your braking in a straight line plan really far look as far as you can to know what's going to happen before you get there so you're flowing to go around okay out into a little bit of a, a country area again um, what can I see how far can I see round the corner limit point as far around the corner as we possibly can is always what I'm gauging what I'm able to stop within so I could stretch a little bit but we're coming up to a junction so I'm obviously slowing early the earlier you slow the better okay not really had a big problem with wind although you can see a few of the fences that have uh, blown down I'm not sure whether that was the wind or whether they've just fell um, but I'm just gonna have a quick talk about wind and how it can uh, affect you when uh, you do have really windy conditions. Again, think about what I said about open sections. We're just over a bridge over the M58 here, um, and that could have been an area. Um, look for areas open, like we've got here. We've got a big field to the right. We're less protected from the trees. So if it was really windy, this would be the area that I would be expecting it. Now, 
Um, be mindful of people and road users who are more vulnerable. Um, cyclists are more vulnerable. Um, yesterday in the stormy conditions, people were really vulnerable as well. So out of interest, um, all the splashing water from the van I've just seen up ahead, I'll go back to the wind in a moment. So there's obviously some standing water here. So again, taking my time, it is only a 20 limit past the school, although I'm doing 16, 17. Now, there's no in the world I can go careering out onto the other side of the road, but I'm just borrowing a little bit more space depending on what I see. Okay, so back to the wind, the vulnerable uh, road users we've got to think of, us in cars, we're probably least vulnerable. Um, vans, yes, uh, lorries, absolutely. Uh, cyclists, absolutely. So give people more space. One thing that I always remember many years ago, um, I know many of you know that I used to play football. Um, I did, I used to play for Huddersfield Town. And I used to travel from Liverpool to Huddersfield every day. And I remember um, there was a particular section of the M62, some of my viewers might know it well. Um, it's not that far away from Huddersfield, to be honest. And there's a big open stretch to the left. It's like a valley to the left and there's a, a dam and water to the other side depends obviously which way you're heading um, and it's on it's constantly battered by heavy winds and i remember many scenarios and situations there where um, i'd be maybe passing a lorry in um the in lane one i'd be in lane two and the wind would be really bashing in from the left hand side and I'd be getting pushed over this side so you're compensating and then when you get behind the lorry because there's effectively a lack of wind the lorry is protecting you from that wind so it like pulls you into the back of it so the buffeting that you can get around lorries is something that you've got to have real care for whenever you're driving anywhere near these bigger vehicles it's really important um, going back to the cyclists and motorcyclists as well they will be avoiding the manhole covers and grids in uh, poor weather expect them to go around them try and spot them yourself before you get anywhere near um, again anticipation's the key impatience is always the problem so make certain that you're uh, you're switched on to that um let's just deal with the junction up at the end i'm gonna go off and go and do some uh, more country roads and try and get up to a little bit more speed shortly okay so the wind although it still could be a problem in these areas it's probably going to be less severe but we are um, more likely to have things blown from houses bins we often see them careering across the roads so again speed to suit to be able to stop and give yourself options if you're coming in too quick you just cut down on your option options and make sure that you're slow enough um, unfortunately there was a member of the public killed um, at Switch Island yesterday in the uh, in the winds, um, some piece, um, I think it was Davery, went through the windscreen of his van and sadly he lost his life. Things like that, I've never thankfully had to experience anything like that, but it is a real threat. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Um, and I wouldn't like to give any particular advice on this subject there's nothing that I can probably say that could aid you apart from it's either your time or it's not but there are real dangers and that goes back to what I said at the start of the video when I left mine if you don't have to drive in these weather conditions well not so much today but like it was yesterday literally don't don't bother okay so this road the A59 up towards um, Orton and Ormskirk. I'm going to head up here. It does change to a 60 limit a little bit further up and we're going to be looking at a few things on faster roads. For now it's 40. Planning escape routes all the time, especially when you've got these puddles um, collecting at the side of the road. Sometimes you might have a big puddle that you've got to go around. If you're really aware all the time, you know who's next to you. You've always got that escape route. It's easy and do more than look three or four car lengths in front i'm looking at the moment if it's possible past the traffic lights that far 
and you should be doing that. You should be looking as far as you can past things to give yourself an early indication of if there are any problems and what you need to do. Um, not going to overtake. Not worth it. Again, people are far too impatient. Um, getting to their journey in the shortest possible time and this is one of the main mind frames or mindsets that I want to try and change people um, that that often causes a majority of the problems in patients so if you're like that change your mindset with it just take your time chilled because since I've been doing this um, my journeys are rarely stressful I always arrive at my day destination nice and relaxed rather than being wired like I was as a young kid battering down motorways at 85 90 miles an hour yes we've all done it this was well before I was a driving instructor um, and I'm not um, embarrassed to tell people that you don't turn into a perfect driver straight from the off you have to work at it and you never get to that perfection there's always stuff you can uh, improve. So, flowing onto the roundabout, picking up on people really early, positioning of the one with the roof box on, it was fine. Watching the Audi, looking for any movement. No, they're staying put. Look for people with misted up windows as well. That could lead to uh, more problems. So, let's see whether it's possible to make a little bit more progress. 44 miles an hour, is it worthy of an overtake? I'm gonna go for one. Um, but I'm, again, looking really far. I'm making certain that there's no issues to the left-hand side for these vehicles that I'm passing now. So, in these conditions, does it mean that you shouldn't overtake? Actually not, I'm only doing 48. I'm not pushing the 60 limit, there's no issues behind. Um, I'm aware of the van and the car in lay-by in case they have any problems. Now, I'm just going on the gas a little bit because we've got a little bit of a splash up ahead. Now all I wanted to do, in the end it was nothing, but all I wanted to do was make sure I was past the vehicles to my left hand side, giving them an option to move out if a need to. Driving in that staggered formation is so important. It's warning of pedestrians a little bit further up, so therefore, um, super aware again. Like I said before, pedestrians make some rash terrible decisions in the wet and it's down to us drivers and motorists all around other road users as well cyclists as also that sometimes it's forgotten that cyclists need to look out for these pedestrians as well it's down to all of us to look out for these pedestrians so i am going to um, take a little road on the left hand side here again early signal i'm aware of the uh Corsa to the right hand side may very well um, take the space, I don't care whether they do, I'm just slowing them down in a nice smooth manner and as you can see we've got a little bit of debris on this road, always look for these bits on the left hand side, um, the slippy parts, I know these people in this house might get fed up but um, unfortunately I'm using a little horn, perfect scenario to do it again, another horn. see the uh, branches that have uh, remained on the road um, that can cause a few problems with your tyres as well although tyres they're pretty hardy going over a branch um, most of the time shouldn't be a problem I'm always looking for little imperfections in the road and branches that I can safely move around and to do that it's not a last minute thing again if I arrive in too quick it's just going to be an avoid rather than a plan so um, plan rather than react as we always say open section here to the left this could be another time where the wind could be howling in as you can see by the trees the winds dropped significantly today so it's not a problem standing water just coming up just after a bend so again i'm ready to deal with everything before this situation you can't see in this standing water a number of years back i had two tires blown out on a lesson um it was because my student went through a puddle, you couldn't see the pothole, and it just took out the, uh, the two tyres. So do your best to avoid these. And it's that scenario where my coat was invaluable as well. So, no, downhill, there's no in the world I was going to go before the Audi. Now I can stretch my legs a little. Uh, we're going to be looking at a little bit of uh, cornering and a few techniques on this road as well. So spotting problems before they happen. Audi's braking. It's warning of farm 
vehicles, tractors turning. There's nothing being worked on in the fields, slowing before. We've got the uh, Kia behind catching quickly. I'm not going to be pressured, but I am going to make a little bit of progress. I'm going to try and make as much progress as I can do safely on this section. Limit points again could easily stop in the distance to see us clear. The, uh, the Kia behind is following at a good distance as well, so that's not a big deal. Under trees, is there any branches on the road? No, I've got escape routes. Could have used a little bit more if I needed. Warning of a junction. Not everyone's going to take the same care that I do at junctions, so I'm always watching out for that and reducing my speed until I'm happy. Get over the little piece of running water then stretch a little bit again but I'm only doing 43 44 miles an hour um, personally um, I could do more but why what's the uh, what's the point I'm not holding anyone up if this uh, car behind wants to overtake they're not showing anything but just following at a good distance um, so if they wanted to overtake I'd always consider signaling left slowing down letting them go past and go through after you can see the tracks that uh, the water settles in this is obviously made by heavier vehicles and, and that's always something you've got to be mindful of for aquaplaning um, sometimes the water in these puddles cannot be dispersed by the grooves and tread in your tires so that's when if it overwhelms the tire that's when you can aquaplane and uh, slide so keep your tires decent tread um, I know the legal minimum is 1.6 millimetres for cars. Honestly, I'll rarely, or I'll rarely let them go below three mil, um, especially in poor weather like this. I think of the seasons, and then uh, and then replace them accordingly. Now let's have a little look. A little bit of standing water here again. Yeah, I'm able just to glide round, slow and all before, balancing my car around the corner, and then if it does hit some standing water there's less of an unbalancing effect try and keep steady as you can now sharp corner looking out for bigger vehicles coming the other way nice caution by the, uh, the black audi that's all good <laughs> that's uh, my tesla um, shouting at uh, the potential problems um, and that's one thing i've learned with the tesla that there are plenty of, uh, of false warnings with it um, I've not had an issue regarding it jumping on the brakes but you imagine if you pile into things too quick um, and you get one of these false warnings the Tesla is going to jump on the brakes so me personally no issues with it but I can see some poor people without planning it will cause big problems flowing as much as I can through the junction and then off we go Okay, so again, open sections. There's no wind today or very little compared to what we've had, but um, look out for it on these open sections. What's this tarmac like? Well, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of standing water on top. So again, I'm affecting my acceleration and braking to suit. Slowest point always before the corner, although you can on occasions be braking into corners. Um, it does unbalance your car and on roads um, as opposed to a racetrack it's not something that you should be looking to do everything done in a straight line before like I've said the limit points I'll just go back to these I know most of my viewers will be familiar with limit points but it's the furthest point you can see my limit point stretches away so I can go a little bit faster I'm always cross viewing as well looking for bigger vehicles um, looking making sure that there's nothing that that van had to steer around so going back to limit points the furthest point you can see uh, determines how fast you go I'm approaching this left bend and I'm getting closer to my limit point so I'm slowing the moment my limit point moves the same speed as me I can keep steady when it's out and gone and traveling further away from me that's when I can accelerate and get going standing water little entrances and uh, little bit of road kill there um, look out for that as well it's really slippy um, anything horse poo on the road uh, yeah there was a clip that I had recently that I think an accident happened because the uh, the person didn't spot this uh, horse 
dung on the road and then did some braking over it and hit the car that was in front. Cross viewing, no problems there. Just slowing this key down a little bit more. And then if I need to, I'll accelerate out the other side. Again, acceleration needs to be really smooth. Can't see, limit point's getting closer, so I'm slowing. Remember, limit point moves same speed as me. I know my speed's good. Limit point disappears up to the top, so I can accelerate out. Okay, no problems. So I'll make a little bit more progress. I wasn't dawdling, but um, this one behind wants to make a little bit more progress. But just be careful of what I've done there. I'm only doing this because um, I'm driving well under um, capabilities and road conditions today. Um, if you are not comfortable with the conditions, never be pushed beyond your ability. The problem is that people often um, overestimate their ability. So if you constantly get into scary moments while you have to jump on the brakes, you're doing things wrong. Little pieces of uh, road surface there uh, are all bobbled out onto the road. That's from potholes. Potholes um, are worse in these weathers. Um, with the standing water, it, it tends to make things all loose and then cars going over it. Uh, ice is another thing which absolutely destroys the road. The, uh, the water gets into the, uh, the midst of the concrete and the road surface and the tarmac freezes and when it freezes it expands and it breaks up the road surface so you can always look for little clues a little piece of road surface bobbling on the road and then uh, then you've got an issue so what I'm gonna do with this uh, Kia behind it's a nice early uh, tell I'm just gonna put a left signal on come past me if you want to come past me and then drive on again so if people want to get past that's always an option um, I've done that just as an example as opposed to it really needing to um, but don't forget there's always that option in your armory if you want to get people past behind and feel less under pressure pressure doesn't get to me um, with people behind um, it doesn't bother me in the slightest to be honest um, I'm used to it every single day being a driving instructor driving a driving school vehicle so no it doesn't bother me but if it bothers you use that little technique so um, massive open section a little bit of debris on the road I was nice and smooth so that was okay and now I can make a little bit of progress so open section again look out for things like this why is that car in front gone out into the straddle position um, perfect it gave us a little idea of the entrances and puddles so look out for things early like I said look out for brake lights look signs really early you can see signs from an age away don't wait till you see the floor so what have we covered today um, we've covered we've gone over a fair few things it hasn't been that windy um, but just remember what I said right at the start poor conditions and that goes for snow and ice as well if you don't have to drive in these poor conditions don't bother um, Hopefully the stuff that I've talked about there is quite relevant over the, uh, the course of the, the next uh, probably six to eight weeks. Um, although these, uh, these poor conditions in this country can happen at any point. So I hope that's been helpful. You take care out there, especially in these conditions. I hope to see you soon.